Shane, an opportunity to spend a moment with you. You rarely stand still. So first of all, I want to say congratulations on last year's championship victory and the extraordinary 2016 that you had. Yeah, thank you. It was a pretty awesome year, pretty awesome time for me and, and not only Red Bull, but McLaren and Europe. Um, pretty, pretty good time. Crazy year. Hard to top that one. Yeah, pretty good. But, um, you know, doing the racing outside of V8s really helps me when I get back in a V8, so that's why I do it. This year's a bit harder. I haven't managed to find as much stuff to do. Um, the calendar's worked out pretty bad. So, uh, yeah, still, still working on that, but um, plenty going on. So 2016 was the icing on the cake, but it took a long time to bake it. So 10 <laughs> odd years in the making. Yeah. I can recall having a chat with you when you first arrived in Australia and they had that opportunity to have mm. a run at Oran Park in 2007. This Peewee that I didn't know, babyface kid lobs and is going to race in our series. You've come a long way. What, I don't have the babyface anymore? <laughs> well, Shane, the last time I saw you sitting in an office, today you're in the appropriate office in the race car. How'd you go? Oh, it was awesome. I ran 15th, so, you know, we were hovering around 20th, 22nd, and, yeah, we jumped up to 15th when we put the greens on, and, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, a bit of other stuff now, <laughs> yeah. haven't you? Uh, that, was, that was cool. I, re I remember that like it was yesterday. Um, Pretty special times, I was pretty raw coming over. I'd only been racing for two and a half years, so it was a big step for me, but it's taken a long time, but we've finally finally got there. But um, yeah, drove, driven for some awesome teams, not only in supercars, but it's, uh, it's been a great time. As I tried to peel back the layers of understanding you and, and your background, couldn't believe some of the stuff you did as a youngster and just all the different types of racing. Yeah, well, my dad was a rally, rally driver and I always went along was in the pits throwing, throwing mud around and, and playing and always wanted to be part of it. Uh, I got a quad bike when I was eight, started racing that and Speedway when I was nine and, and just learned from there, you know, and I was really loving Speedway, really loving quad bikes and, and Dad thought I should drive a go-kart just to learn lines and go racing and I hated it, to be honest. Go-karting was too competitive, everyone was too serious, so didn't really enjoy it, but I was good at it. So only did it for a year or so, um, kept racing Speedway and quads and, and loving that and then um, in a magazine, speed sport magazine in New Zealand, they ran a scholarship to race uh, Formula V or Formula First as it was later called and, and went and did that and enjoyed that, you know, didn't think I'd like it after karting but um, big circuit racing was, was awesome so yeah, did a year of that and then a year of Formula Ford and then Formula Toyota, still racing quad bikes and loving that and then um, yeah, got the call up from Ross Stone to come and test so had to give up the quads. So you were doing the mix and match thing even back then, quad bikes and various types of race cars as a kid almost. Yeah, well it was really just to learn lines and understand racing um, to, do, to do karting. It was just to make myself better in the other forms. So yeah, kind of what I do now. Do you reckon that stuff has put you in good stead for this label that you've now got as being very, very good in the wet as well? The ability to control the car and of course that's also morphed into your drifting, yep. all that stuff, it's, it's contributed? I think so, yeah, and I definitely learnt a lot in the other side of stuff than I did from karting. So definitely probably a better background for the wet and other types of racing when the conditions are changing. This will be the first time that Shane Van Gisbergen finds himself on a race podium a top three finish for the youngster. So you mentioned Ross and Jimmy Stone just inducted into the Supercars Hall of Fame, legends in our sport. Yep. Did they chase you or did you chase them? Uh, I got introduced through Ken Smith, who helped me in the Formula Ford and got to know Ross and Jimmy, got introduced 2006 at Pukekohe and then uh, tested end of 2006. So yeah, went, went pretty good and then had a couple of tests and then the Team Kiwi Drive came about. So when you roll your thoughts back and you think about Oran Park back in 2007, the Team Kiwi car, yep. so this is a bloke that was running around on a quad bike a minute ago, now you look around and some of the biggest names in the sport are by your side, that must have been pretty cool. Yeah, it um, was pretty daunting too, I remember the end of Friday when everyone does their new tyre run, I got all excited and at the last corner I remember Scafey coming over with his headlights on and I got in his way, just trying to go at my own pace and he had his hand out waving, he was pretty angry. but. Um, you know, the next day I qualified 29th out of 31, so near the back, and I was just like, you know, a second off or something. So I'd never been a second off in my life, so it was a bit of a shock, and it uh, took a long time to, to get up to speed. It underscores, though, the incredible intensity in the championship. You know, you're perceived now as a superstar, but it's not overnight success. It's, it's 10 odd years in the making, and to yep. begin with, it's really tough. 
Oh, definitely. And you can see why superstars from overseas jump in our cars and struggle. It, um, I was probably not fast till the end of 2009. 2010 got better and better with podiums, but it's very hard to jump straight in in our cars and be com competitive. A battle like you cannot believe between the young bloke from New Zealand and the series champion. What about around the back straight? <laughs> While he's trying to put a move, they're side by side rubbing panels. And Shane Van Gisbergen is getting encouragement on the radio. Go, give it to him. Uh, even now when I go to Europe and you see our supercar guys in the 12 hour, everyone's fast. Our guys are, are top level and uh, it's kind of understated, you know, it's, it's definitely the toughest series I do. Do you remember first pole, first yeah. win, you know, the first big moments, just rattle through them? Yeah, I had my first, first pole was uh, Melbourne Grand Prix, but didn't count, not being championship, so Sandown that year was, was the best one, and then uh, got a win before that actually, which was Hamilton 2011. This is the day the wild child arrived in the V8 supercars. Victory for the Gears at home. That was probably my biggest highlight for many years, um, winning that and fans cheering just because you're, you're a Kiwi and then being the first one to do a proper burnout at the end of a race was, was awesome. So that sort of started the burnout trend. OK, I want to talk about that. So what are the magic ingredients to the coolest burnouts? Because you've ended up making this an art yeah. form. Well, I think people keep trying to match me, so I need to find ways to do it better. But um, just always love doing skids, drifting and growing up. So yeah, it's, uh, it's my way of letting loose and expressing myself, I guess. New Zealand team, New Zealand driver, how good is that? New Zealand's favourite son right now. Exactly. He smoked him. We've waited a while, 111 races in fact, for Shane Van Gisbergen to get his first win on the board. But just listen to this. That moment in Hamilton was fantastic. It really was a a hair standing up moment for everybody in the industry to see a Kiwi do so well on the streets of a New Zealand racetrack and uh, you must have sensed at that stage that you could go on with the job and take the highest position in the sport at some point. Yeah and I really hoped it could be with, with Stone Brothers. We were really moving forward at that stage and uh, that year I think we finished fourth in the championship and we were looking to move better. but. It didn't happen, but um, that, that kind of year we were really moving forward and it was great to be a part of. And yeah, as I said, to win it at Hamilton like that, it was a pretty special time. You, you, you've obviously mentioned in the background there the fact that ultimately that relationship came to a close. Ross and Jimmy were leaving, Erebus was arriving and there was a heap of controversy surrounding all that. That's right. And you made the right competitive decision, but was it managed in an appropriate way at a personal and managerial level, do you think? No, definitely not. And uh, we've only sort of just patched all that stuff off now. Um, actually got, you know, friendly with Jimmy again a, a couple of years ago, but also Ross only a couple of weeks ago. So that was a pretty cool moment. But at that time, it wasn't really done right. Uh, I didn't want to be part of the new thing. I thought it was uh, not going to be competitive. I was already struggling through 2012. OK, mate, it's going flat. It's going flat. Just be careful. Broken, is what it is, but um, you know, I was happy to sit on the couch 2013, go race Speedway again or something overseas, but uh, the opportunity with Techno came about and as a, as a driver getting a 888 car, the same spec as what I'd envied for years was pretty hard to turn down. So yeah, took that on board. It was the right decision career-wise career for sure, but um, outside of that, a lot of stuff didn't go well, but it is what it is. I think I'm a better person and, and driver because of it. Those things are awkward because it stretches personal relationships and so drivers all signed bonnets and did all that sort of stuff when we yeah. wrapped up the previous season. Did that create some awkwardness with some of the blokes up and down the lane that it's taken a little while to rebuild? Yeah, of course, because at that stage, you know, I wasn't coming back. I was happy to go home and, you know, I went straight and was in my speedway car at Waoku Dirt Track and loving life over that summer and just enjoying racing for fun again. So at that stage, uh, it was a pretty cool time, but then, you know, early January when, when it came about, it was pretty frosty with a lot of other people. So, yeah, it was a difficult time, but a good one as well. But you climbed out of it and you paired up with Steve Hallam, who we've had some great conversations with in the past on this program and the incredible yeah. things that he's done. Greybeard observation looked to me like he was just the right bloke for you at just the right time. Oh, definitely. Um, just his experience and and his guidance and knowing you know all the situations we faced he'd been in before so he knew how to approach it and 
and his methodical preparation was, was pretty cool. I do remember one semi-awkward moment. It's great to talk about the highs, but you've got to reflect on the lows and build on them. But I can recall when you cleaned up at this very location, I think we were interviewing you downstairs, but the interview had to be conducted yeah. in the Erebus garage after you'd won. And I can recall just the tension <laughs> in that process. That was pretty tough. Yeah, I had old love there sitting with the death desk there, but I just angled the trophy in the right way and I was pretty happy about that one. You uh, set the fastest lap of the race early in the piece as well, apart from all the other things you achieved this weekend. Did that on lap 24, but a uh, special moment there for you. You're really going to savour this one. Oh, all the stuff that's going on, it's great to just get out on track, get out there, get the results, and uh, it's uh, ironic which garage we're in now, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Still to come, Shane Van Gisbergen relives that heartbreaking Bathurst moment. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh, two seconds, three no. seconds, four no. seconds, five no. seconds, no. six seconds. And how it all changed with an opportunity of a lifetime. It was pretty awesome and, and very different uh, the way the team approaches things. It works as a team very well.